Modern airliners often come equipped with winglets and other wingtip devices. They are seen as a simple way of reducing the vortex generation at the wingtips, thereby lowering induced drag. This can extract a few percent of fuel economy from an airframe. Winglets were a cost-effective retrofit, or add-on, that increased the effective span of aircraft families that began with metal wings and were later re-engined or modestly improved. This did not affect compatibility with gates or airports. However, aircraft design is always a process of compromise. Each aerodynamic enhancement alters the complexity of maintenance, certification, structure, weight, and costs. The effectiveness of a winglet in improving efficiency depends on the operator's priorities and the capabilities of the baseline wing. Let us first see how the MC-21's wing changes this calculation. The MC-21's designers took a different approach from the outset. Rather than fitting a winglet onto a conventional metal wing, they invested in a high aspect ratio composite wing. It was built using a vacuum infusion out of autoclave manufacturing process. The result is a carbon fiber structure that is thin and stiff, enabling an extended effective span and an aspect ratio of about 11.5. The baseline geometry already captures much of the efficiency gains that winglets would otherwise deliver, since induced drag decreases quickly as aspect ratio rises. The high aspect composite wing has been estimated to improve aerodynamic quality by roughly 5 to 6%. This may lead to total mission fuel savings of about 8% compared with older aluminum wings. The marginal benefit of adding winglets is therefore reduced in this case. In summary, the MC-21's black wing was engineered to reduce induced drag through structural and planform changes rather than through tip devices. So what winglets do the A320neo and 737 MAX use? Airbus and Boeing approached single aisle efficiency differently. Airbus created the A320neo family and introduced large blended wingtip devices called sharklets. These were paired with new engines. Airbus says the new winglets and aerodynamic refinements are responsible for a major share of the program's fuel savings. Sharklet savings are often reported to be 3 to 4% on longer flights, with engines and other modifications accounting for the rest. The Sharklet's main benefit is reduced induced drag and greater effective span, especially in cruise. Longer missions capture a higher share of the winglet's advantage. Boeing chose another path. They offered split scimitar winglets as a retrofit for earlier 737 NGs, and fitted refined blended and canted winglets on the 737 MAX. The retrofit typically gives modest but valuable savings from 1.5 to 3.5% depending on mission and subtype. The MAX winglets were further refined as part of its aerodynamic package. Airlines often install winglets wherever possible because even small percentage savings translate into major fleet-wide value. Now let us compare big wing gains versus winglet gains. Adding winglets to conventional single aisle designs usually reduces fuel use by 2 to 4% on medium to long flights. Retrofit split scimitars give savings at the lower end, while large sharklets designed for a clean sheet airframe can give the higher end on long routes. By contrast, the MC-21's composite wing alone is claimed to improve aerodynamic quality by 5 to 6% without any tip device. Studies show that raising aspect ratio by about one unit can cut induced drag by double digits in drag terms and improve total drag by single digits. These gains translate into several percent less fuel burn, depending on weight and mission. As a result, the incremental business case for winglets is weaker on the MC-21. The wing itself already delivers efficiency that conventional wings only reach with winglets. Let us now consider the hidden costs of winglets. A winglet does not come free. It increases the bending moment at the wing root, which demands stronger structure or reinforcement at the wingtip box. This adds weight and cost, the benefits of a thin, light composite wing 
can be offset by a poorly integrated winglet. Certification and maintenance costs may also rise. New wingtip shapes can require structural and aeroelastic testing, new inspection protocols, and sometimes adjustments to handling in crosswinds. These costs may outweigh the small percentage of fuel saved, especially when the wing is already efficient. This is why MC21 designers treated winglets as a reserve option for later, not a requirement from the start. The architecture allows tip devices to be added if future needs justify them. So do winglets still make sense for the MC21? Not fitting winglets at first suggests they may be added later. Airlines operate different missions. Long thin routes may benefit more from winglets than short regional hops. Winglets could be appealing in future MC21 versions designed for longer ranges or if new lightweight materials make them more efficient. Airport span limits and airline payload requirements may also affect the economics. For now, the better option was to adopt a streamlined composite wing that solves most of the induced drag problem at the source. So what is the takeaway for airlines and engineers? A 2-4% to fuel saving from winglets on an A320 or 737 is a big deal for a large fleet and is usually pursued. But designers can capture more savings by building a wing with higher aerodynamic quality from the start. Using composites allows thin sections and higher aspect ratios without the recurring costs of retrofits. The MC21 shows this second path. Its design solved the aerodynamic challenge in the wing itself, making winglets unnecessary at first. But they remain available as an option if future economics or missions demand them. In conclusion, winglets are effective tools in the aerodynamic toolbox, but not the only ones. Airbus and Boeing combined winglets with new engines and refinements to gain efficiency. This was especially useful for adapting older metal wings. In contrast, the MC-21 uses composites in a high aspect ratio wing to eliminate much of the induced drag in its basic design. That reduces the marginal benefit of winglets. The MC-21 entered service testing without them as a practical balance of structure, aerodynamics, and cost. Yet the door remains open to add them later if needed. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, please take our channel membership, which is very affordable, to encourage us.